Hi, I'm Coach Rob, and I wanted to take a few minutes today and just describe a concept commonly referred to as the RICE formula as it relates to handling an acute injury. First and foremost, I want to define what an acute injury is. An acute injury is any kind of trauma to the body. It could be soft tissue or it could even be structural, i.e. in the bone area. That's happened within the last 48 hours. And I want you to really pay attention to the timeline on when your accident happens and how quickly you get to this application of this formula. There's a saying that we, uh, we throw around in the human performance world, particularly on the soft tissue side, and that is when there is trauma to the body, you're in a race against space and time. The body's natural defense mechanism is to engorge that area with fresh blood, which is going to, it's going to increase the volume of white blood cells. Those are the ones that try to heal the, the uh, wounded area. And believe it or not, you want to try to control that swelling and inflammation because it creates a lot of tenderness and soreness, which then has a negative effect on your sleep. It's kind of an interesting little dichotomy that you're trying to offset here. Let's first go through what RICE, the acronym RICE, what it stands for. The first thing I want you to recognize is the R stands for rest. Unfortunately, this is the hardest one for most athletes to uh, really sink their teeth into because they think I'm an athlete, I can't afford to take a day off, I've got to get back into the routine. Unfortunately, if you continue to try to exercise when your body's under a state of trauma, there's going to be two things that happens. First of all, your range of motion is going to be limited because the area has been engorged with blood. Your range of motion is going to be limited. The second thing that happens is because of that limited range of motion, your sports specific skills are going to be negatively affected, which is going to increase your risk of further injury. Okay, so rest is first and foremost. I mean, we're talking even with a minor impact, you need to be looking at two to three days of rest. Okay. When it comes to human performance, there's other elements that you can focus on. Flexibility, nutrition, your sleep, your sports psychology. So rest doesn't have to be a total or a perception of total waste of time. Use the time effectively. When it comes to the second letter, I, that stands for ice. For the first 48 hours, you don't ever want to introduce heat to the equation. What you want to do is you want to apply ice for 10 to 15 minutes at a time, trying to keep it localized, then take the ice off. Let it let the ambient air temperature warm it back up for 15 to 20 minutes. Put the ice back on. Okay. I know sometimes based on body parts, it's not always convenient, but the more that you could completely submerge the body part, the traumatized body part in cold, preferably ice water, the more effective your efforts are going to be. I know sometimes the shoulder is difficult to get that completely submerged, but if you'll do it, It'll give you a much quicker return and you'll be able to control swelling in a shorter period of time. The third letter is C and that stands for compression and it's just what the name implies. You want to take like a soft gauze um, uh, sports wrap and you want to take the injured area and you want to try to keep compression on it. Now you want to be careful here. You don't want to put so much torque on the compression that you actually start to restrict blood flow to the area. You don't want to impede your body's natural defense mechanism to try to get fresh blood into that area. What we're trying to do is control swelling. Okay, so compression is helpful. Just don't get, like I said, don't strangle that muscle or that particular traumatized area. The fourth letter in the RICE acronym stands for E elevation. And just as the name implies, what you're trying to do is you're trying to let gravity help. All right, let's take the wrist for example, even though it's a difficult area to keep elevated when you're sleeping, the idea here is if my wrist has been jammed up, at least I allow gravity to help pull the fluid out of that compartment. Okay, it's an easy way to do it. Um, if you go to a massage therapist and they really know what they're doing, they'll manually work that fluid and the swelling out of the arm as long as they've done an assessment and they make sure that it's not a contraindication. Massaging a swollen area is not always bad. You just want to make sure that you don't do it so hard that you end up uh, causing more trauma. Okay. The next thing that I want you to think about is when it comes to when to introduce heat, you don't ever want to introduce the heat, as I mentioned earlier, for the first two days. We only want to introduce heat starting on day three. And the best way to do that is to let the ice do its job for 10 to 15 minutes, then introduce the heat. Leave the heat on for 10 to 15 minutes, then remove both. Let the ambient air do its job for 15 to 20 minutes, okay? If you want to just cube out an hour, go 20 minutes of ice, 20 minutes of heat, 
20 minutes of nothing and try to rotate that at the top of each hour if you can do it, okay? The one thing that I want you to understand is there's nothing that's going to work as well as total submersion. Like if you're dealing with a wrist or an, an ankle, I would suggest getting a five gallon pail, filling it a quarter of a way with ice, fill the rest of it uh, with a water so you get a big slush in there and submerge it, okay? When it comes to cryotherapy, which is the use of ice and heat, you have to realize that the body has to go through three stages when it comes to ice. It has to go from cold to burn to numb. So if you don't get through those full stages, what happens is most people will pull that body part out before it goes numb and they don't reap the full benefits and they go, see, the ice doesn't work. It's not that it's not working, you just didn't leave it in long enough. One other tidbit that I want you to uh, please pay attention to, stay away from ibuprofen when you hit the ground, okay? Any form of trauma to the body, what you want to be aware of is pain. Okay, pain is the only way that your body can keep you from doing further damage. I mentioned to you earlier that when a joint gets inflamed due to some trauma, what it's trying to do from the inside out is to keep you from going any further in the range of motion and creating further injury. So with that being said, if you pop a couple ibuprofen, your body isn't going to, the pain receptors are going to be deadened, okay? You're not going to feel the pain. They're going to have a false sense of security and you're going to go out and try to resume your normal activity and unfortunately you're just re-injuring what's already been traumatized, especially when we get into the joints. All right, I can't emphasize that enough. Soft tissue, a little bit more of a, a, a leeway there, but when it comes to joints and swelling, you don't want to be immune to it. When you look at your wrist and it's all bulged out here swollen, you pop enough ibuprofen, you won't feel it, but that doesn't mean that the swelling's gone away, okay? Now if my wrist and my limited range of motion is going to create some other biomechanical issues in my sport, uh, think about it. I don't think you've done yourself any good. So just to, just to recap real quick, remember you're playing a, a race against uh, space and time when you first get injured. You want to do ice for the first 48 hours, ice and heat after the 48 hour. Go 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. Avoid the ibuprofen. Okay. One last little tidbit. When you lay down at night, please make sure that you prepare yourself to do all the things that you need to do with compression and elevation. I know it's not fun to try to sleep with your wrist up like this, but if you can prop it up with pillows for as long as possible, you doze off, the more that that hand is up, the more gravity can do its job and help you. So uh, I know it sounds crazy, but you have to recognize that your body's not repairing itself until it's in a mode of sleep and rest. So our goal is just to set you up so that you get the greatest amount of bang for your buck for the time that you put into it. If you have any questions about how to handle an acute injury that I may not have answered here in today's video, please email me. My email address is Rob, R-O-B-B, the number three, at earthlink.net, and I want to thank you for watching the video.